Friday. We are continuing our march through the phylum of life, and we um, we are getting ever more complicated as we go. Um, so we are we're leaving behind some of the simpler invertebrates and um, getting into a very complicated group of invertebrates. Phylum Arthropoda is where we are here in chapter 16. And we're going to talk about everything that isn't an insect this week. And then we're going to talk about insects next week. Um, so phylum arthropoda, um, arguably the most successful phylum uh, of God's creations. If you just judge by the number of creatures that there are. There are lots of arthropods out there. Um, I'll give you a moment to write this down before I start talking. So this, this is the most prolific kind of, uh, of creature out there. If you just judge by the, uh, the number of species or the number of individuals in each phylum, um, most of animal life are arthropods. So uh, if you ask, what did God make as when he made animals? Most of what he made, we would call bugs. There are more uh, there are more species of arthropod than any other kind of phylum by, by a huge piece like not it's not even close eighty percent of all animal life are arthropods uh, and so and it, if you're looking for a career in biology and you want to you like biology biology is fun and you're wondering where can I get a good job uh, being a bug scientist is a great place to find a job because 80% of life is arthropods. And if you were to say, well, how many species of arthropods, you know, have we cataloged and discovered? Maybe only 10% of the kinds of arthropods that are out there. There are so many more kinds of bug that need to be described. There's a huge amount of work to do. Uh, and so, you know, if you really like jungles, and you like uh, walking around through jungles and catching bugs, you could have a whole career of catching bugs and describing them because there are tons of kinds of arthropods that have not yet been described. Okay, um, characteristics of the phylum. The, the most um, readily observable characteristic of an arthropod is its exoskeleton. You have a skeleton too, but your skeleton is on the inside. You have your squishy parts around your hard parts. Right? A bug has its squishy parts inside its hard parts. So the, the exoskeleton provides the, the rigid shape for the animal, and all of the muscles and tendons and vessels and nerves and organs are inside this shell. Um, the exoskeleton is not alive. There's no vasculation. There's no blood flow to it. Um, it does not have any nerve endings. A bug does not feel through its exoskeleton. Um, so it's it's this non-living shell, similar to like a mollusk that has a non-living shell, but a mollusk's shell grows with the animal. As the snail gets bigger, it grows more shell and lives in the outer part of it. As a clam gets bigger, it grows more shell on the edges, and so the, the shell gets bigger. But as a bug grows, the shell has to be shed. The exoskeleton has to be shed. It does not, um, it's not living, it doesn't grow. And so it's this hard thing that is secreted by the epidermis, by the skin. Bless your face. And, um, and it doesn't grow. So when the bug gets bigger, it starts to push on the exoskeleton and it's too tight in there. So what it has to do is it breaks the, uh, the old shell off and crawls out of it and has to grow a new shell. And so that process is called molting. Um, oh, I skipped this. There are three layers to it in your book. It talks about the three layers for the level of understanding I expect you to have just know that there are three layers. Um, but uh, it has to shed its, its exoskeleton. So for a couple of days after the molt, the bug is vulnerable because it is still hardening a new exoskeleton. So if a, if a spider is, is growing and molts and it crawls out of its old exoskeleton and leaves the empty exoskeleton behind, 
for a couple of days while the new exoskeleton is forming, it's very squishy and very susceptible and um, can very, very easily be, you know, attacked by something that doesn't have its armor shell. Uh, and so for a couple of days, the, they tend to um, hide after a molt for a while while the new exoskeleton uh, is hardening and, and developing to be what it's supposed to be. Um, an exoskeleton is a great uh, idea. God came up with a beautiful idea for protecting his creatures. It's armor. If it gets, you know, boogered up and scratched and dented, and that's fine. It's not alive. The animal doesn't bleed. Um, and, it, you know, in a certain amount of time, it'll bolt to that and grow a new armor, or, you know, protection area. So it's a very good protective design, but it is expensive. It's costly because the, the bug has to produce all of this protein and ooze it out of its skin to make a new exoskeleton. And that's a lot of nutrition. It has to eat a whole bunch more food to be able to produce all of that protein and have it just go out of its body and sit there. Um, so it's a big nutrition cost. Uh, before a bug molts, it has to eat a lot to have the, the stored protein in its body to make a new exoskeleton. So, and it's heavy. Um, if, you, if you weigh a bug and then take off its exoskeleton and then weigh the squishy stuff inside, a bug is mostly exoskeleton by weight. So, uh, you know, you are not mostly bone by weight. You are mostly other stuff. But a bug is mostly its skeleton by weight. And so um, it's carrying around a lot of weight, and it takes a lot more nutrition to be able to produce a new layer of this stuff. So it's a, it's a big investment in the life of the bug to have this. But it's a very good idea if you're going to be crawling around and other things try to eat you, and you're going to get scratched and you're braided and you might fall off a tree. Um, it's good to be surrounded in armor. Um, and so these, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful design, uh, but it makes the bug have to eat more than it otherwise would if it didn't have that. Okay. Um, arthropoda, the word, means jointed appendages. Uh, poda is foot. And arthro is joint. This is joint foot, okay? Um, jointed appendages. All their legs have joints as opposed to, um, you know, like worms that just have, pro, uh, that have, you know, things sticking out of the segment that don't have joints. This is different than that. These have joints. They can move and walk and grab and they can use their legs like we use our arms and legs. So arthropoda means jointed appendages. Every Every bug has jointed appendages. Um, most of the time, uh, every segment of the bug has some kind of appendage. Um, and that's true for, for most things. Um, and so some appendages, some jointed appendages are walking legs. Insects have six walking legs. Uh, uh, spiders and scorpions and their friends have eight walking legs. Crustaceans have 10 walking legs. Centipedes don't have 100, but they've got a lot of walking legs. And millipedes don't have 1,000, but they have a lot of walking legs. So there's a lot of legs. Um, lots of bugs have claws. Not every bug, but lots of bugs have claws. And so that's another, that's another kind of jointed appendage. Lots of bugs have wings. Again, not all, but most. Most uh, bugs you know, have wings of some kind. And then mouth parts are jointed appendages too. We have one mandible that is jointed and it smashes food up against a fixed upper jaw, the maxillary bones. Um, bugs have lots of mouth parts, four, six, eight mouth parts that all move independent of each other and you know smash food up in front of its face. And so uh, sometimes there's lots of jointed appendages that make up their chewing organs. And so they're all jointed. They can all be moved independent of each other. Um, arthropods are also segmented. Much like a worm, like the, the uh, annelids, their body divided into segments. Uh, arthropods' bodies are divided into segments as well. Sometimes the body segments are still clearly divisible all throughout the organism. Um, 
when we dissect the crayfish, you will see very clearly segmented portions of, of the animal. Um, and centipedes and millipedes, uh, you can still see very clearly defined segments throughout the body of the animal. Sometimes segments are fused. And so sometimes the thorax region, the, the chest region, we would call it, where a lot of the vital organs sit, all the um, all of the segments there are, are fused together, and when we dissect it, you won't see uh, divisions between all of those body segments. Uh, and sometimes the abdomen gets fused as well, usually in spiders. You don't see um, segments in the abdomen, you'll just see a round bulbous thing being on the back, right? Um, but still, in many arthropods, the whole body is segmented. And you can see all those little segments like you can in worms. Um, occasionally, the head gets fused with the thorax, the chest region, and we would call that a cephalothorax. Um, spiders have a cephalothorax, and uh, crustaceans have a cephalothorax, where the head doesn't have a joint between the head and the thorax. The head and the chest region is all just smashed together into one lump, and we call that a cephalothorax. Cephalo means head, and then thorax is chest, so this is a head chest. Uh, and, you know, it's, so, yeah, Lee is trying to demonstrate a head chest right now. Yeah, where, where you, you don't have a neck, there's no neck, right? Your head just is in the front of your, there you go, thank you very much, good job. <laughs> okay, here's some, here's some pictures of bugs, and um, the diversity here is astounding. In Genesis, in Genesis, it just says that God made things that creep along the ground and things that swarm in the air. And, and Genesis is a beautiful text, but there is, it doesn't do justice to what God made when he made bugs. Um, it's not just things that creep along the ground and things that swarm in the air. I mean, there are so many kinds of bugs. It's amazing. You have, you know, the praying mantis. Um, this is a trilobite, which is a, a uh, fossilized... Um, order of, ins of, uh, of arthropod that we don't have today anymore. Um, this is a whip scorpion uh, that doesn't actually have a stinger on at the end of its tail. Um, crabs are arthropods. Here's a regular scorpion that you would see out on the, the leeward side of the island. Of course, um, fireflies with glowy butts um, are pretty cool. This is a beautiful, beautiful cricket, a locust. Um, and so locusts can be gorgeous. This is a centipede, not so gorgeous, but but we can we can still be amazed at the creative power of God to make this this amazing creature that you know lives life very well. Of course, butterflies and moths are are gorgeous. Um, another centipede. This is another uh, another trilobite. Um, that we don't have anymore in our in our world, but is is an, uh, an older kind of arthropod. Spiders are arthropods, and then here's a crawfish. We'll cut them open later this week. But the diversity of bugs is just amazing, and God God is worthy of praise when you start looking at bugs. Um, some of the other features of arthropods: they have an open circulatory system, so they have a heart, and the heart pumps blood but it's kind of more like a bilge pump in a boat than like a circulatory system that you would recognize in a, in a, a higher animal like a mammal or even even worms um, annelids have a closed circulatory system but bugs do not bugs have an open circulatory system so it will suck blood that has pooled on the bottom of the animal and it'll suck it up through a dorsal heart that's on the back side of the animal and it'll squirt the blood over the top of all the organs. And then the blood just kind of oozes down around the organs, invades the organs, and pools on the bottom again, and gets sucked back out and squirted over the top of the animal. So it's like a bilge pump in a boat. Water that winds up in the bottom of the boat, um, inside the boat, gets sucked up and squirted out. Um, and that's that kind of design in the, in the arthropod. Um, they have a ventral nervous system, so their brain is in their belly region. 
okay? Um, and so, which is why you can cut the head off of the bug, and now the bug can't see, but it's not really dead, and it still crawls around because the brain is not actually up in the front of the organism. The brain is kind of in the in the belly region of the organism. It's it, uh, you'll you'll see it when we dissect the crayfish. Um, actually, no, you won't. But um, anyway, uh, but you'll see other people will see it when we dissect the crayfish. Uh, they have what's called a circumesophageal ganglion. That's the name of their brain. Ganglion just means a pile of nerves. And it is not, it's not enough nerves that we would call it a brain, right? A brain involves hundreds of thousands or millions of neurons. A ganglion is a group of neurons, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 of them. Okay, so not enough neurons that we call it a brain but it's a pile of nervous tissue. Um, and circumesophageal, tell me where you find this. What does circum mean? Around it, yeah, weird. The ganglion forms a loop of nervous tissue that surrounds the esophagus. So every time the bug eats, the food goes through the brain. Oh. Uh, kind of weird. Kind of weird. So the nervous tissue surrounds the esophagus. So if you had a circumesophageal ganglion, your brain would be like, you know, right around here. It would go around your esophagus, which is kind of strange. So that's their brain, is a circumesophageal ganglion. They, of course, have antennae that come out of their heads uh, and help them perceive the world. Um, an antenna is a is an olfactory organ, so they don't see from their antenna. What do they do from their antenna? <laughs> it's an olfactory organ, so they smell. That's how they smell out the top of their head, right? It's picking up chemical signals out the top of it, out in the air. Um, and then some of them have compound eyes, and some of them have simple eyes. A compound eye has lots of has lots of fixed lenses, um, all arranged next to each other at angles. So, like you've seen a geodesic dome where it's it's a round thing made up of flat pieces that are all stuck next to each other, right? That's what a compound eye is. It's a whole bunch of fixed lenses pointing in different directions, and each lens will get an image from that direction, or that direction, or that direction. The brain puts all of these images together to perceive what's around it, right? Um, some of them have simple eyes, which is just a fixed lens pointing in one direction, and they can't turn. No, no bug can turn its eye. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if they look around, they have to move their whole body. And if you have a cephalothorax, then you have to like go like this, right, to look around. Um, but that's but that's the benefit of a compound eye, is you can't. You can't turn a compound eye, but you can simultaneously see in lots of different directions. Okay, uh, so here is the anatomy of a crayfish or a crawdad, um, and this is what we will be getting into later this week. So just so you can see, it has a dorsal heart and then a ventral nervous system. This is the what we would call the like sport, spinal cord, but for them, it's not in the spine and it's on the belly. And here's their circumesophageal ganglion that goes around the esophagus. Um, and then uh, they have eyes uh, up here, sometimes on eye stalks, sometimes the eye is on some structure that pokey pokies out. Um, antenna, sometimes they have multiple antenna. And again, you can see that the body is segmented, especially in a, in a crustacean like this. And every segment has some kind of appendage. Um, and so this is a, a, a good example of an arthropod, okay, and all the joints on the different appendages. You'll get into this in detail later this week. Um, uh, this is a honeybee, same idea, circumesophageal ganglion, the, the pile of nerves goes around the esophagus, um, and the, the main blood vessel and the heart is up in the top, and in, the, and in, a, in an insect there are sometimes multiple hearts. Um, and then the, the nervous tissue is down along the bottom of the body. And again, you can clearly see all the segments, and uh, most segments in a bee 
um, have an appendage of some kind. Okay, so let's get into a couple of the of the groups of arthropods. The first one is crustacea. Crustaceans. These are crabs, lobsters, shrimp, pill bugs, which are more technically called isopods, but everybody calls them pill bugs, um, and barnacles. These are crustaceans. Um, they have a cephalothorax, so their brain, uh, their head, and their chest is fused. Uh, they don't have a neck. Okay, um, and it's covered by a piece of exoskeleton that starts at the nose and goes all the way to the back of the chest region. There's no segmenting it. It's all one rigid shell um, that goes from the nose to the, the end of the chest where the abdomen begins. And that's called a carapace. And, uh, and so that's a, it's a big piece of body armor that protects the, all the vital organs, all the, all the head organs, all of the, uh, you know, Vital organs of the of the organism are all protected by this big heavy carapace. Their abdomen is segmented, and for a crustacean, there are six segments in the abdomen. And for a crustacean, each abdomen segment has a little tiny leg, itsy bitsy leg, and they don't walk on those legs; they swim with those legs. Yeah. So if you if you watch a um, shrimp. A shrimp will crawl around on its walking legs, but then when the shrimp swims, it it doesn't move its walking legs. It launches off of the rock and it pulls its walking legs up close to its body. And then these little itty bitty legs off of the abdomen go like this, like dog paddle, and the thing swims forward. Right, and that's how that's how it swims. Um, I was I was bothered when I recently watched The Little Mermaid with my daughter because when uh, when Sebastian swims, <laughs> he swims with his walking legs, and he would not have swum with his walking legs. He would have swum with his swimmerettes. But so they, they were anatomically incorrect when they made a little worry. Um And I almost wrote Disney a letter, but that's okay. Um, no, and their little the little legs that come off of their abdomen are called swimmerettes, and they swim with them. Uh, then they have four pairs of walking legs, so they've got eight walking legs. Um, and then they have the, the, the other pairs of things that you see on a, on a uh, crustacean are the, the chillipeds, the big claws. So um, we often say that a, a crustacean is a decapod. It has ten legs because four of them are walking legs and then two are like claws. Uh, and, but it actually has a lot more than that because it has all the swimmerettes too. So the chillipeds are used for defense and for feeding. Um, almost every crustacean has big, serious front claws. There are some lobsters that do not. The slipper lobsters don't, and the uh, spiny lobsters don't. But uh, the the big, like main lobsters that you get in restaurants, big claws, and almost every uh, crab, big claws. Um, isopods do not. Pill bugs don't. Uh, and barnacles don't, but most most uh, crustaceans do. And then they have regeneration. If a lobster loses a leg, it'll grow a new one, right? If a uh, it's the same thing for all of these sorts of organisms. As a matter of fact, when they get into a fight, um, sometimes they will purposefully ditch a leg um, to make the predator think that they won and uh, maybe distract the predator by making the predator eat their leg while they get away. Um, and then they'll just grow a new leg. So same sort of strategy that lizards have with their tails. Drop the tail, maybe the predator will eat that and let me get away. Um, same thing that happens with, with these, these creatures. So uh, something big is attacking a lobster, the lobster can drop a leg and run away. Um, and hopefully the thing that was attacking them would be satisfying by eating the lobster leg, right? Um, and then they also have parental care. Some of the few bugs that take care of their babies. Um, crustaceans take care of their babies for, for a while at least. Uh, so, pictures of, our, of crustaceans. Um, you're pretty familiar with crabs and crawfish and lobsters. We live where there's a lot of species of these things right off our shores. 
Uh, pill bugs. I don't know if I've seen pill bugs here. Do you guys have pill bugs? Yeah. Underneath, yeah. Um, they are, but underneath, so they're different. Types. So, so this is a pill bug taken from the bottom side, um, and you can see the lobsterish sort of appearance that they have as well. Okay. Wait, they're roly polies. Yeah. Yeah. Roly polies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here's a here's a hermit crab. Um, and this guy, you know, did not grow that shell. That is not his shell. He stole that from a dead snail. Um, and so a, a uh, hermit crab is a regular crab and has a crabby abdomen, but they, um, they have a very thin shell in their abdomen. And so uh, they steal stronger shells and live in them. Um, and so this is a, a snail that died and the... the uh, Hermit crab then slides his abdomen into the snail shell and calls that home for a while. Cool. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, this is a mantis shrimp. This is the like ninja of the sea. Um, and uh, later on, I will show you a video of a mantis shrimp uh, doing its deed. And they are terrifying. If you are small enough that it wants to eat you, you need to be afraid. Um, but they're they're beautiful and they are deadly. Have you ever watched that Yumiko pop here? The Aaron and the uh, Yumiko yeah. Bullet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. And they they hit hard enough to break glass. Oh, so if you have a mantis yes, shrimp in your aquarium, it can destroy your aquarium and get out. How about if you like try? To I want a mantis. Like, it could. It could do <laughs> that. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> these are. Try please. These are um, isopods, so like roly polies or pill bugs, um, but that are that are in the water. The pill bugs are isopods that are on land. The, these are marine isopods, um, and then these are barnacles. Yeah. Uh, barnacles. Barnacles. Yeah. On, yeah. On sometimes they're on whales, sometimes they're on boats. But these are crustaceans, and these are crustaceans that live on their back. They glue their back to some substance. Crystal. They glue glue their back to some substance, and then they secrete a calcium sort of shell around them, and they live legs out to the water, and they filter the water through their little shell. And when you look at these, you're like, oh, that's some kind of mollusk, right? That's a snail of some kind or whatever. But no, this is a this is a bug. This is a crustacean that has glued his butt to a rock, or to a whale, or to a boat, and live leg out. Um, so it's yeah. Pretty incredible. These are these are related to crabs and lobsters. Um, and here's what it looks like inside. They they glue themselves down. They live leg out, um, and they filter water through a mouth. Um, and if you were to carefully dissect the sh the shell away, you'd have a lobster looking thing in there, which is kind of strange. Yeah, and this is kind of funny. Here's people eating a lobster, which is an arthropod, and then there's a cockroach on the floor, which is an arthropod. I simply cannot eat with all that disgusting arthropod there. Yeah. <laughs> You're eating arthropod. Um, the other group I want to show you real quickly are the, um, is the group Chilicerata. And these are spiders and their friends. Spiders, scorpions, and horseshoe crabs. And I put crabs in quotes because they're not really crabs. They're spiders. Um, these guys have four pairs of walking legs. Um, and they also have chilicera, but not big claws. They, they have smaller ones right next to their mouth. And uh, those little chilicera um, are, are used as, as uh, to hold food. And they also have fangs that inject venom. Uh, and so the little chilicera around the mouth of a spider um, is what injects the venom. They don't have any mandibles. They don't have any like jaw parts, um, and they don't have any antenna. Um, so that's what sets them apart from from crustaceans. Um, they do have four pairs of simple eyes, and which means they have a total of eight eyes. Okay, and you've got four of them looking at you here in this picture, um, and they have book lungs. So they've got an opening. And then um, in your lung, there's a, it's a branching set of tubes that get smaller and smaller tubes, and the air goes down to the little tubes, and the blood is, uh, filters the oxygen out. 
in a spider, there's an opening to the air, but it doesn't go down in tubes, it goes into like leaflets, um, flat sheets of tissue. And so um, we won't dissect a spider, but um, if you were to, you would find that the lung is a layer, is a series of these like sheets of paper looking tissue. So they're called book lungs. Uh, and spiders come in all different sizes and, and are again, just a glorious, glorious creation of God. Um, and while we don't necessarily like to have them in our life because they're all venomous, there's no such thing as a spider that is not venomous. The question is just, is it a venom that can hurt you or not? Um, we don't like to necessarily have them on us because they're creepy looking and they hurt when they bite. But if it weren't for spiders, the world would be overrun in bugs. So they eat most of the insects that are consumed are consumed by spiders. And so um, if there weren't spiders in our world, we'd be drowning in mosquitoes. So praise God for spiders. Oh, we just we just don't want them, you know, on our person. Um, so spiders come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's a the common garden spider. Um, and then this is a uh, this is a, another you know common spider. This is the uh, this is the wolf spider, I think. Um, but there's lots of different sizes and shapes of spider. Yeah. This this is called this is called the Goliath bird eater. Oh, and it's called the Goliath bird eater because yes, it eats birds. Oh my uh, And you can see this is not Photoshop. This is. This wow. is a picture of how big it is. It is bigger than this man's hand. Whoa. So he, he put his hand behind it to uh, just as a as a example of size. Um, and these guys these guys have, have have a venom that will definitely make you ill because their venom is strong enough to kill a bird. Uh, but they rarely bite humans, and so um, the Goliath bird spider actually can be kept as a pet. Why? Uh, yeah, and then and then you would feed it like finches. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Um, who is in this school that just absolutely hates birds? Haley. Haley should own this. Yeah, and Jaylee too. Yeah. Um, this is your last slide. Oh, but I'm out of time. Darn. We'll do this last slide tomorrow. So um, we saw the. The Goliath bird eater, which is this monstrous tarantula sort of spider that uh, is one of the largest in the world. It's huge. Okay, this was the slide that we were on. So, um, a spider, uh, which is part of what's in this phylum, uh, sorry, in the subphylum, uh, has two body segments. Most arthropods have more than that. Um, but a spider just has two body segments. So they have a cephalothorax, a head and chest region that's been fused into one, and then an abdomen that hangs off the back. And the abdomen is not really segmented. Um, there are some, uh, on some spiders, you can see different layers of scale on the, uh, on the abdomen, but the, it's not segmented where there's like muscle tissue walls that go down through the body. Um, so they just have two body segments. They have spinnerets. That's the distinguishing characteristic for, for spiders, is they have this fluid, and it's kind of like silly string. Silly string in a can is liquid, and as soon as it comes in contact with air, it gets hard, right? It becomes a string. Um, and spider silk is the same. It's a liquid inside them, but then as soon as it comes out the body and contacts air, it solidifies. And most spiders can make at least three kinds of silk. Some of them have been seen to make seven different kinds of silk. And it has to do with how strong and how sticky it is. Um, so spiders will use a thick, not very sticky kind of silk to make the main frame of their web. And then they will use a thinner, very sticky kind of silk to um, to go around the frame and make the, the part that catches the bugs. Um, and then there's usually another kind of silk that they can use for um, catching themselves as they if they fall and 
or ballooning and flying through the air. So, sorry. Um, so some of them, um, some of well, all of them when they hatch and they're brand new itsy bitsy baby spiders, um, all of them will release a very fine silk. And the wind catches it, and because they're so light and small, the the silk acts like a kite, and they go flying away, and that's how they find their new home to live in. Have you ever seen Charlotte's Web? Yes. That's how the movie ends at the end with all of the babies ballooning away, um, and uh, and that's how spiders spread out when they're when they're hatchling, they will balloon to a new location. Um, but some spiders, they have, we were, I, I just discovered, um, some spiders can glide um, as adults. And they, uh, there's a bunch of uh, species of spider that are flattened. And they're called flat spiders. It's a really creative name. Um, but they look like they've been squished. And they, uh, they live in jungles and uh, they live in tree canopies. And for a, a spider that lives up in a tree canopy, um, you don't want to be on the ground because on the ground are things that would like to eat you, uh, all kinds of lizards and things of that nature. Um, and so it's much safer to stay in the tree. And so God gave these flat tree spiders the ability to, where if they fall off of the, the tree, they actually put their legs together in such a way that they become like a little flat wing. And they can glide and steer themselves to a branch or another tree and land on the tree and not have to fall down to the ground and then have to, you know climb all the way back up to the canopy. So it's pretty cool. God does neat things. Uh, the world is not safe. Uh, yeah. Well, these the article that I read was about South American like jungle sorts of things. We have jungle here, but I don't know if we have these gliding tree spiders. Um, but anyway, the. Uh, they eat, it's kind of gross, in case you didn't know this, oh, every spider produces venom. There's no such thing as a non-venomous spider. Every spider makes venom. The question is just, does the venom hurt you or does the venom not hurt you? Um, there are really only two spiders in most parts of America that can do damage to you. One is the black widow and one is the brown recluse. Um, and I don't know if we even have those on this island. Do we have no. black widows or brown recluse? No. We have the, uh, the, what's that big, the cane, the cane, the cane spider. spider, but but their bite is it's just like a bee sting. I mean, it hurts a little bit, but it's not going to like touch your mouth and bite food. So every, every spider makes venom, and the venom doesn't just kill, the venom is, is also a digestive juice. So maybe you didn't know this, and um, now you will. When the spider bites, it injects the venom, and the venom uh, kills, and then starts to digest the creature. And they don't have chewing mouth parts. Spiders can't take a bite of anything. There's no jaw on a spider. They can only drink, right? And so what they do is they bite, and then the animal that they just killed starts being digested, and their, their organs and tissues turn into a soup, and then the spider drinks the soup that used to be the animal. Um, and that's how spiders eat. And because they eat mostly other bugs that have an exoskeleton, they bite and all the soft parts turn into soup. But the exoskeleton hangs on. And so the fly becomes no longer a fly, but a hollow fly-shaped shell with fly soup inside. Mm -hmm. And then the spider drinks the fly soup and the shell like keeps it all contained. Um, the Goliath bird eater that we saw um, eats birds, and so the birds don't have a shell. So that that spider has to kind of get to it quicker because if the bird turns completely into soup, then you've got birds who fall the ground. Um, so, yeah. Um, very often, um, the male spider is eaten by the female spider after mating. Uh, so we're glad that humans don't do that. Nobody would know that. Um, everyone's like, how come I don't know daddy? <laughs> um, but uh, for spiders, the uh, the female uses the nutrition of the male's body to make the eggs. So it's very nutritionally expensive to make an egg sac with 
hundreds or thousands of baby spider eggs in it. So after the female and the male mate and the female has been fertilized, the female needs a good meal to now produce eggs, and she gets that good meal by eating the father of her children. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So, male species of spiders tend to be smaller um, than female spiders because male spiders really only have one goal live long enough to mate and then feed my children. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, scorpions are in the same group of creatures as spiders. They're both in the same subphylum. Um, and scorpions also have four pairs of walking legs, right? Uh, but they don't have a two-segmented body. They have a mini-segmented body. They've got the cephalothorax, and then their abdomen is not one segment. The abdomen is lots of segments. And the last segment has a stinger on the end of it, okay? Um, and so the stinger is their main weapon. Um, uh, most scorpions do not have the ability to bite with venom. Their venom is made in their tail. And so they sting their prey and then wait for it to die and then eat it. And then scorpions have chewing mouth parts, so they can actually take bites of their food. Um, and so it's a different eating strategy than the spider. Their, uh, their pedipalps uh, are, are claws, but all insects have pedipalps, have some kind of organ around their mouth. Um, it's usually used for holding the food right like close to you and then chewing on it. But the scorpion's pedipalps are not little things right by the mouth. They're huge with claws, and they look kind of like lobsters, but they're, they're different. A lobster's claws are legs that have claws. These are the, the scorpions are are mouth parts that have claws. If you look close on a scorpion's mouth, it actually comes, the claws come out from the jaw. So it's kind of a weird thing. Um, they hold, they hold prey, they can choose their, chew their food. And then also in this group, in this uh, same subphylum, are mites and ticks and horseshoe crabs. So we're not going to spend as much attention on that. So they also exist in this same group. So a scorpion has this cephalothorax and then has an abdomen, usually with seven sections, and then their tail is, is kind of a continuation of the abdomen, um, and then the stinger at the end. So, and you can see here, the legs come off the cephalothorax, and the, the pedipalps, these pinchers, come out of the mouth. So it's a, it's a weird thing. Uh, very cool creatures, though. So this is the kind of scorpion that we have here. Um, and the stinger of this, the sting of the scorpion is annoying and like a bee sting, but you're not going to die from the sting of the scorpion here unless you're, you know, an immune compromised child, then you'd be in trouble. But most people um, are just going to be annoyed by the sting. Um, scorpions are good parents. They. They, <laughs> the baby scorpions, when they hatch, hang out on top of mom for like weeks until they're big enough to go out and hunt on their own, which is, which is cool. Most bugs don't care about their kids, but scorpions are actually pretty good parents uh, protecting their babies. And I've mentioned this before, scorpions bio, uh, not bioluminescent, scorpions phosphoresce. So if you hit them with black light, they glow, which makes them easy to find if you are in a place with lots of scorpions and you want to make sure that you're, you know, scorpion free. If you're going camping in that area, you bring a black light and you can shine it around. Scorpions will glow. You can just take care of them and then sleep with a little bit more comfort. So there's that. Um, this, this looks like a spider uh, because it doesn't have a stinger. But this is what's called a whip scorpion. It's still a scorpion, but it's a scorpion that doesn't have a stinger on his tail, which just which means he just looks nasty. He actually can't do anything to you. He doesn't have a venomous bite, and he doesn't have a venomous sting. He just chases down bugs and holds them and grabs them and chews on them. Okay, so he's a regular kind of predator. Uh, they just look nasty, but they're they're gonna grab smaller bugs and hold them while he eats them. So um, whip scorpions are actually kept as pets by lots of people. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then these are mites. These red things are mites. Um, and these are ticks. So this is a this is a tick, and that's a tick embedded in mites and ticks are are um, parasites. And they exist. Mites are very, very, very small. They, you can see them with your naked eye, but you've got to like be staring and paying a lot of attention. They're they're on the edge of microscopic. Um, uh, all over things. They're they're parasites. You, I'm sure, don't have mites. You would you would have red and flames, a nasty looking skin. But there was a bird that was hanging up, hang, hanging around uh, up in the tables by the cafe. And I don't know if you guys noticed it on your lunch, but I I've got the middle schoolers for lunch. And they were like, oh, what's wrong with that bird's foot? And they were trying to catch it and like take care of the bird. What's wrong with the bird's foot is it had a mite infection and its skin was all like <laughs> gross. And I said, oh, don't touch that because then if you touch that, the mites will get on you and your hand will start to look clean. Um, so these, these, they live in the skin and they cause an irritation in the body sends fluid to the irritation to try to heal it. And that's what they want and they drink that and they have, lay their eggs in your skin. Yeah. Not pretty. Um, so that's mites and spiders. And then, of course, horseshoe crabs are part of that group as well. Not nearly as terrifying. Um, they look sort of like sinister um, on the bottom. Uh, uh, but but they're totally harmless. They're just, they're like a, an ocean spider. Um, they're called horseshoe crabs because at first people thought they were, they were, um, they were crustaceans. But they're not. They're related to spiders. Um, they're, yeah. Oh, 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 it's it's yeah. yeah. So they're kind of cool looking. Um, and that's the end of it. So there you go. Sorry, I didn't finish that yesterday.